We know that this meteorite is from Mars because it has the fingerprints of Mars all over it. Renowned scientists Carl Sagan and Frank Drake just opened a meteorite and found something inside that calls for an immense warning for humanity. Nobody expected this horrible surprise in a meteorite, which can change our fate. What have they found that's got the whole world on edge? Let's find out about the strange celestial discovery that could mean the end of our world. The Dark Find in a Martian Imposter the frozen lands of Antarctica is a treasure trove of hidden secrets, making it a frequent destination for scientists eager to explore its secrets. In 1984, an intriguing discovery was made in the Allen Hills Mountains, a meteorite weighing just under 4.4 pounds that turned out to be one of the rare Martian meteorites found on Earth. It is believed that this meteorite was originally part of Mars's surface, blasted off into space by a massive collision with another celestial body over 4 billion years ago. It stayed on Mars for eons until about 15 million years ago, when it was hurled into space, finally making its way to Earth around 13,000 years ago. This timeline and origin story were pieced together through extensive scientific studies, including various dating methods. In 1996, this meteorite became even more significant when NASA scientists using a scanning electron microscope to examine its structure, found what appeared to be fossilized traces of magnetotactic bacteria. This discovery suggested the possibility of past or even present life on Mars, igniting excitement and debate within the scientific community. The message was sent as a radio signal that was made up of 1,679 individual digits, and it lasted for 169 seconds. This message wasn't just a string of random numbers. It contained detailed information about the biochemical elements present on Earth, details about human DNA, and even shared the average size and weight of a human being. To understand this message, any aliens receiving it would need to figure out how to organize these numbers in a particular order. It has been over 40 years since this message was sent into the vastness of space, and yet, there has been no reply. It's possible that there are no planets capable of supporting life in the constellation of Hercules, or maybe any intelligent beings that might have received the message simply couldn't decipher it. Moving to another secret of human history, the Moai statues of Easter Island stand as one of its most recognizable and enigmatic features. These giant stone figures represent human forms, and number 887 in total, they were crafted by the native Rapa Nui people sometime between the years 1200 and 1500 AD. The first outsider to lay eyes on these statues was the renowned explorer James Cook. The material for most of the Moai statues is andesitic basalt, sourced from the Rano Raraku volcano. On average, each statue is about 11.5 feet tall and weighs roughly 11,000 pounds with the tallest one nearly reaching a height of 32.8 feet. To this day, the precise reason why these statues were built remains a topic of debate and wonder. The local people believe that these statues were made by their leaders and are imbued with the spiritual energy of their ancestors, which they think helps to keep their island lush and productive. However, the specifics of this belief vary widely among the islanders. Furthermore, the method used to move these colossal stone figures to their current locations is still not fully understood. Some scientists think that the Rapa Nui people might have used basic tools that allowed them to lift and transport these enormous stones, possibly with the help of animals. Pumapunku is a megalithic ritual complex located at an altitude of over 2.5 miles in Bolivia. Archaeologists long believed that the Tiwanaku people built Pumapunku in the 6th century AD. However, recent research using radiocarbon dating showed that some elements of the complex date back to 1500 years BC. If the construction of the complex indeed began more than 3,500 years ago, this discovery could be called a sensation in archaeology. In studying the ruins of the complex, Scientists have been able to determine what the complex looked like in ancient times. 
Pumapunku was a group of structures on a hill surrounded by stone masonry. Two types of stones were used in the construction, red sandstone and andesite. The sandstone was sourced from a quarry located 6.2 miles from the construction site, while the andesite had to be transported from a distance of about 56 miles. Of course, there was no machinery for these purposes at the time, so it remains unknown how people managed to move stones weighing several hundred thousand pounds over such distances. It is also surprising that all the stones were specially processed so they could be laid without the use of mortar. Again, ancient builders managed this task without the tools we have today. It's truly mind-boggling to think that ancient civilizations could construct such complex structures entirely by hand. This difficulty in understanding has led some to speculate that such monumental structures might have been built with the help of extraterrestrial beings. Near the ancient city of Cusco in Peru, situated at a breathtaking altitude of about 11,483 feet, is the imposing fortress of Sacsayhuaman. This archaeological treasure is famed for its walls that zigzag across more than 984 feet. Historically, it's documented that the construction spanned from 1438 to 1508 AD, a period during which over 30,000 people were involved in its building. The Incas engineered this fortress as a formidable defense mechanism to protect their capital from potential attackers. Yet, some scholars argue that the origins of Sacsayhuaman might trace back even further than the Incan period, suggesting that it could have been the work of earlier civilizations. The fortress is characterized by its massive walls, made up of enormous stones, with the largest estimated to weigh around 770,000 pounds. The logistical challenges of moving these huge boulders from distant quarries to the construction site would have been immense. Moreover, the precision with which these stones are fitted together is nothing short of astonishing. They are arranged in a polygonal pattern and are so tightly joined that not even a thin strip of paper could be inserted between any two stones. This level of precision, achieved without the use of any mortar to hold the stones together, speaks volumes about the advanced masonry skills of its builders. Considering the technology available during the 15th century, the construction of Saksawa Man is an incredible feat. To assemble such a massive fortress using only the giant stones at hand and basic tools all within the span of just 70 years, is a testament to the ingenuity and determination of the people of that era. The question of how these ancient builders managed such a task involves not only physical labor, but also intricate planning and knowledge of engineering and architecture. Now let's look at strange and puzzling objects found right here on Earth. The strange statues of ancient Iraq. Oumuamua is a remarkable object that made headlines as the first known visitor from another star system to pass through our solar system. It was spotted on October 19, 2017, by a Canadian astronomer named Robert Warrick. He was analyzing data from the Pan-STARRS telescope in Hawaii when he noticed this unusual object. Initially, scientists thought Oumuamua was a comet a common type of celestial body made of ice and dust that typically forms a tail when it gets close to the sun. However, they soon realized that it didn't fit the usual characteristics of a comet and started calling it an asteroid. This classification as an asteroid also turned out to be problematic because Oumuamua didn't behave like typical asteroids. Most asteroids have a more or less round shape, but Oumuamua looked strikingly different. It had an extremely elongated shape, much like a cigar, measuring about 1,312 feet in length and only 131 feet across. Its appearance wasn't the only unusual trait. As Oumuamua traveled through space, its brightness varied multiple times, which is not something asteroids usually do. This variability in brightness suggested that it might have an irregular shape, tumbling as it moves through space. Moreover, the path it took through our solar system was also peculiar. Unlike planets and other solar system objects that move in predictable elliptical orbits, Oumuamua followed a hyperbolic trajectory. 
This type of path meant that it was not bound by the sun's gravity and would eventually leave the solar system. Intriguingly, Oumuamua didn't just travel at a constant speed or on a straightforward path. It seemed to accelerate and decelerate periodically, almost as if it had its own propulsion system. Every six hours, it rotated on its axis, and sometimes it appeared to hover momentarily in space. These mysterious behaviors led to a lot of speculation. Some people even wondered if Oumuamua might be an alien spacecraft. This idea was fueled by its unusual acceleration, which some thought might indicate it was a ship adjusting its speed. However, most scientists dismiss the idea of Oumuamua being an alien craft. They argue that its strange motion could be explained by natural phenomena, such as the outgassing of materials from its surface when it came close to the sun, creating jets that acted like thrusters. Fuente Magna, often referred to as the American Rosetta Stone, is an intriguing artifact that has puzzled experts for decades. This large ceramic bowl is decorated with intricate drawings and inscriptions in two languages that remain unknown and unsolved to this day. The story of its discovery adds to its mystique. It was found near the ancient Bolivian ritual site of Pumapunku in the 1950s by a local farmer named Maximiliano. Mistaking it for a regular piece of pottery, he used it to feed his pigs. In the 1960s, the bowl was given to a pastor named Manuel, who later passed it on to the local government of La Paz. For many years, this enigmatic bowl was overlooked and garnered little attention. However, in the 2000s, interest in the Fuente Magna was revived by two Bolivian researchers, Bernardo Beato Yakov and Freddy A.R.S., who believed that the mysterious inscriptions could be decoded. They enlisted the help of Dr. Clyde Winters, an advocate of Afrocentric historical revisionism, to study the inscriptions. Dr. Winters proposed that the text was written in the ancient Sumerian language. This theory, however, was not supported by experts in Sumerian linguistics, who disagreed with his interpretation, leaving the inscriptions a secret once more. Today, the bowl is preserved in the Museum of Precious Metals in La Paz, yet its origins and purpose continue to elude experts, making it a subject of ongoing debate and fascination. On a different note, the night of August 15, 1977, brought a curious event in the world of astronomy. Dr. Jerry Amon was wrapping up his observations at the Big Ear Radio Telescope in Ohio when he detected an unusually strong and narrow cosmic radio signal. Lasting 72 seconds, this signal was so significant that Amon marked the reading with a circled WOW on the printout, hence naming it the WOW signal. This mysterious signal seemed to have come from the direction of the constellation Sagittarius. For years, scientists hoped to witness the signal again, but it has never reappeared. Some conspiracy theorists jumped at the opportunity to claim it as evidence of communication from extraterrestrial beings, although this theory has not seen any scientific support. Experts have noted that transmitting a signal of such magnitude across such distances would require a transmitter far more powerful than any known to exist on Earth. For example, over 500 times stronger than the HARP system's 3.6 megawatt capacity. The prevailing scientific explanation now attributes the signal to hydrogen clouds from two comets that were within the telescope's field of vision at a frequency of 1,420 megahertz. Despite this rational explanation, the origin of the WOW signal continues to be a topic of intrigue and speculation among both astronomers and the public, embodying the eternal human quest to understand the unknown in the universe. In the early 1900s, archaeologists in southern Iraq uncovered some odd clay statues. These statues showed women with thin bodies and very long heads. The faces on the statues were unusual too. They were narrow, with huge eyes, and the noses were connected directly to the mouths, which had no lips. The faces didn't look human at all, and were more like reptiles. Some statues showed women feeding babies who also had long heads and odd faces. 
All the male statues looked strange as well and were shown in the same pose, with their arms crossed over their chests. Scientists think these statues were made more than 7,000 years ago and represented gods that the people of ancient Mesopotamia worshipped. However, some people who believe in UFOs think these statues look like an alien reptilian race and suggest that ancient humans might have met these aliens and worshipped them as gods. But scientists disagree with this idea, pointing out that later civilizations like the Sumerians also showed their goddess Namu in a similar way, indicating that this was just how people back then imagined their deities. Dogu are small clay figures of humans and animals made during the Jomon period in Japan, which lasted from 13,000 to 300 BC. Archaeologists have found about 15,000 of these figures across Japan. The oldest ones were made around 10,000 years ago. Despite finding so many, scientists are still puzzled about who made them and why. They think these figures might have been talismans for children. Most dog figures show women with large hips and a slim waist, and some even depict pregnant women. A few of these figures have very large heads and big eyes. Some experts believe that the tradition of making these figures might have started after ancient humans encountered aliens who taught them pottery. The true purpose of the dogu is still heavily debated, making them some of the most mysterious artifacts from the past. Next, we discover a modern secret that scientists can't explain. Underwater UFO or just a rock? In 1974, a big fire broke out on the Betts family's property on Fort George Island in Florida. After the fire was put out, the family found a weird metallic sphere that looked like a cannonball. It had a completely smooth surface, was just over 7.9 inches across, and weighed 22 pounds. The Betts decided to take it home with them. Soon after, they started noticing odd things about the sphere. It seemed to react to sounds. Whenever the kids played the guitar or piano, the sphere would make an annoying buzzing sound and shake. Even more strangely, when they rolled it on the floor, it sometimes stopped and rolled in the opposite direction. This peculiar behavior was especially noticeable on sunny days. The news about this peculiar sphere quickly spread and caught the attention of the media. People started saying it might be from outer space. Scientists were eager to study the sphere, but initially, the Betts family didn't want anyone messing with it. Eventually, they allowed experts from a naval base in Jacksonville to examine it. When the scientists x-rayed the sphere, they found out it was hollow inside, but they couldn't tell what was inside it. The sphere was made of stainless steel and was very precisely made. There was no radiation coming from it, but it was able to resonate, which explained the vibrations and humming noises. In the end, the scientists figured out that the sphere was made by humans on Earth, but they couldn't figure out when it was made, who made it, or why it was made. The origins of the sphere remained a secret. The Swedish company Ocean X, known for its underwater treasure hunting, made an intriguing discovery in June 2011. While searching for a sunken ship in the Bothnian Bay of the Baltic Sea, they stumbled upon something unexpected. At a depth of 285 feet, instead of a ship, they found a bizarre object. Their sonar captured a blurry image of this object, which appeared circular and measured about 197 feet across. They named this find the Baltic Anomaly. The object caught attention due to its regular geometric shape and several smooth, protruding features that made it look unlike any natural formation. It closely resembled a spacecraft, and nearby, a 984 feet long trail seemed to suggest a landing path. This discovery quickly sparked widespread debate and speculation. Theories about its origins ranged wildly from it being an alien spacecraft, a secret submarine, to even the ruins of Atlantis. However, scientists were skeptical of such sensational claims suggesting instead that the Baltic anomaly was likely a piece of basaltic rock carried by a glacier, which when melted, settled at the bottom of the sea. The tale of the Black Knight satellite traces its beginnings to the late 19th century with the pioneering work of Nikola Tesla. In 1899, while conducting experiments in Colorado Springs, 
Tesla detected an unusual radio signal that he believed was from outer space, possibly sent by extraterrestrial beings, a notion he was quite open to. Tesla wasn't alone in capturing strange signals. In 1928, from his home, Jorgen Hals experienced an echo in his radio transmissions, suggesting something unusual in their behavior. Decades later, in the late 1970s, Scottish researcher Duncan Lunan analyzed these signals and hypothesized that they could be from an ancient, unknown object orbiting Earth, estimated to be about 13,000 years old. In 1998, during the STS-88 mission using the Endeavour shuttle, Photographs captured an unidentified object in low Earth orbit, which UFO enthusiasts eagerly claimed was the Black Knight. However, scientists clarified that the object was merely a space blanket lost during the mission, debunking theories of an ancient alien satellite monitoring Earth. Ancient Egypt's links to extraterrestrial lore are often highlighted by remarkable finds, such as the discovery made by British archaeologist Howard Carter in 1922 near Luxor. Carter unearthed the tomb of the famed pharaoh Tutankhamun, finding not only the pharaoh's mummy, but also numerous treasures, including a peculiar dagger. This dagger, despite being over 3,300 years old, was remarkably well-preserved, with a gold-plated handle and ornate decorations that seemed ahead of its time. The secret deepened with scientific interest in the dagger, culminating in a 2016 analysis using X-ray fluorescence spectrometry. The study revealed that the dagger's material came from a meteorite, suggesting its extraterrestrial origin. While it remains unknown if Tutankhamun or his contemporaries knew of the dagger's cosmic connection, this discovery hints at ancient people's possible awareness and reverence for celestial objects that fell to Earth intertwining their cultural and technological narratives with the stars above. Moving on, we delve into ancient stories mixed with claims of alien encounters. The debate over the star child skull, human anomaly, or alien hybrid. In 1996, near Mount Baigong in China, an unusual discovery was made that puzzled scientists and sparked the imagination of many. Researchers found a network of tube-like structures that looked a lot like metal pipes. These pipes varied in size, with diameters ranging from a small 0.79 inches to a large 15.75 inches, and they seemed to weave through the rock formations as if they were part of an ancient plumbing system. This unexpected find naturally captured the interest of the scientific community prompting an in-depth investigation into their origins and purpose. Upon closer examination and using various dating techniques, experts determined that these structures were approximately 5,000 years old. Further chemical analysis showed that the material was predominantly iron oxide, with significant amounts of silicon dioxide and calcium oxide mixed in. The presence of such materials and the age of the pipes raised a significant question. How could a civilization from 5,000 years ago have developed the technology to create iron-based structures? For six years, details about the Baigong pipes were kept under wraps by the authorities, adding to the secret and speculation surrounding them. When information about the pipes finally became public, the media was quick to jump on the story with some reports even suggesting that these might be the remnants of an ancient extraterrestrial visitation. This theory captured the public's imagination, and surprisingly, local authorities seized on the story to promote the area as a tourist attraction, marketing it as a site of ancient alien activity. As time passed and more advanced scientific tools were used to study the Baigong pipes, a clearer picture of their true nature emerged. It was discovered that the area where the pipes were found used to be forested thousands of years ago. Over centuries, trees in this region were buried under layers of sediment. Water rich in iron seeped through these layers, filling the gaps left by decaying tree roots and hardening over time to form iron casings. After the trees completely decomposed, these iron deposits remained, encased within the rock formations. 
This natural process created the pipe-like structures that had initially been mistaken for pieces of a sophisticated metal system. The Roswell incident remains one of the most talked about events in UFO history. On the evening of July 4, 1947, a farmer named Mac Brazel, who lived near Roswell, New Mexico, heard noises outside his house that sounded like thunder and saw a bright flash across the sky. Thinking it was just a typical storm, he went to bed without much concern. The next day, while checking on his sheep in the fields, he stumbled upon scattered debris that he couldn't immediately identify. Initially, he assumed the wreckage came from some type of aircraft, especially since his farm was close to an Air Force range where he had previously found similar debris. However, upon closer inspection, Brazel realized that the materials were unlike anything he had ever seen. This discovery prompted him to report his findings to the local sheriff, who then passed the information along to the military. Colonel William Blanchard from the nearby Air Force Base quickly arrived at the site to investigate. After his initial examination, Blanchard announced that the debris was from a flying disc, a term used at the time to describe unidentified flying objects. This statement briefly confirmed the suspicions of many that alien spacecraft were indeed visiting Earth. The story took a sudden turn the next day when General Roger Ramey, intrigued by Blanchard's claim, personally inspected the debris. After his assessment, he held a press conference where he contradicted Blanchard's earlier announcement. Ramey stated in the local newspapers that the debris was merely from a downed weather balloon, not a UFO. This abrupt reversal sparked widespread debate and confusion. Many found it odd that Blanchard would first identify the material as part of a flying disc, only for General Ramey to dismiss it as a weather balloon shortly after. This incident fueled widespread suspicion and conspiracy theories, suggesting that the military had initially told the truth about encountering alien technology, but then backtracked to prevent public panic and maintain secrecy. Over the years, this event has been dissected and discussed countless times by UFO enthusiasts and skeptics alike. People who study UFOs and many others who follow their work still argue that the Roswell incident is not just a tale of unidentified flying objects, but also a case of government cover-up. They believe that the authorities have gone to great lengths to keep the existence of aliens and their technology hidden from the public eye. The layers of secret surrounding Roswell continue to captivate the imagination of many around the world, making it a cornerstone story for those who believe in extraterrestrial visits and a prime example of how quickly official narratives can change, leaving us with more questions than answers about what really happened that night in New Mexico. In another part of the world, specifically the bottom of the Mures River in Romania, a remarkable find was uncovered in 1974. Workers dredging the river discovered ancient remains of mastodons, which roamed the earth over 11,000 years ago. Among the fossilized bones, they found an unusual object which they couldn't identify. Curious about its origin, they handed it over to the Cluj-Napoca Institute for Analysis. This object, later named the Ayud Wedge, measured 7.95 inches in length, 4.92 inches in width, and 2.76 inches in height. Intrigued, scientists began a thorough examination and discovered that the wedge was composed of a complex alloy made up of about 12 different elements, predominantly aluminum. The thickness of the oxide film covering the wedge suggested that it was at least 300 years old, a perplexing find given that aluminum was not isolated until 1825 by Danish physicist Hans Christian Ørsted. The Ayud wedge, found alongside the ancient remains of mastodons, suggested an age of thousands of years, which conflicted with the known history of aluminum. This anomaly attracted the attention of both scientists and ufologists, the latter of whom speculated that the wedge might be of extraterrestrial origin. Even more intriguingly, some aerospace engineers supported this theory, suggesting that the wedge could be part of the landing gear from an alien spacecraft. This speculation made the Ayud Wedge an out-of-place artifact, as it seemed too advanced and enigmatic for its time, and to this day, its exact age and purpose remain unresolved, 
continuing to fuel both scientific curiosity and popular imagination. Our trip continues with unexpected finds that make us question what we know about history. The secret of the Drapa Stones, were they ancient alien artifacts? In 1998, two unusual skulls ended up with Melanie Young, a midwife. She found one of the skull's shape very strange and decided to give it to Lloyd Pye, a writer and researcher who focused on paranormal topics. After looking at the skull, Pye believed that it was from a child who was part human and part alien. He started a project called Star Child to study the skull more deeply. The team figured out that the skull was from around the 12th century AD and belonged to a boy who died when he was four or five years old. Although this might seem ordinary, the shape of the skull was extremely unusual, and Pi was fascinated by it. He spent many years studying it, insisting that the skull was from a mutant and dismissing any claims against his theory. Even when DNA tests showed the child was actually a normal human, with several genetic conditions that caused the skull to deform. The skull, known as the Star Child Skull, has been the center of much debate, with some believing that scientists are hiding its true origins. In 1912, Wilfred Voynich, an American book dealer, bought a remarkable manuscript from Italian monks. The manuscript contained text in a language no one recognized, along with many drawings. The Voynich Manuscript, as it's known, is 248 pages long and includes sections on botany, astronomy, biology, astrology, medicine, and cooking, each paired with illustrations. Some of these drawings show things that don't exist on Earth. For instance, the medicine section shows unknown plants, and the astronomy section features drawings of unfamiliar planets. The writer of this book is also a secret. However, Scientists determined in 2009 that the manuscript was written in the 14th century. Many experts have tried to decode the text, but no one has yet succeeded. Because of its mysterious content, some people think the Voynich manuscript might be about life on another planet, although there's no proof of this. This is why the Voynich manuscript is considered one of the most mysterious books in the world. In the 1930s, a young American woman stumbled upon two skulls in a cave in Mexico. One of the skulls had an unusually round shape, different from anything she had seen before. She took the skulls back to the United States and kept them a secret, unsure of their significance or how to explain their odd appearance. The story of the Drapa Stones is another fascinating tale wrapped in secret and controversy. These stones supposedly serve as evidence of an alien race known as the Drapa. However, many skeptics dismiss the entire narrative as a mere fabrication. According to the story, in 1938, a group of archaeologists led by Professor Chi Pu Te from Peking University were exploring caves in the Bayankara Ula Mountains when they came across an ancient burial site. At this site, they unearthed numerous small humanoid skeletons and 716 peculiar disks with holes in the center, believed to be around 12,000 years old. These disks bore inscriptions in a language no one could initially understand. Several years later, a professor named Tsum Um Nui, also from Peking University, claimed to have deciphered these hieroglyphs. He announced that the inscriptions detailed the harrowing tale of the Drapa people, an alien civilization that crash-landed on Earth. According to his translation, the Drapa wanted to befriend the local human populations, but were met with hostility and violence. This revelation was sensational and stirred much public interest, but it also attracted skepticism. Could the secrets within this meteorite reveal unknown truths about our universe, or are they too terrifying to handle? Share your thoughts, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more revelations.